if you walk into school classrooms today, they're starting to look a lot different than they did you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago. You see a lot more technology in the classrooms, kids using laptops or tablets. But even though they look somewhat different with these new technologies, a lot of times the whole approach to education hasn't changed very much. And I think that's a real problem. They were holding on to old ways of teaching and learning, even though we're starting to be surrounded by these new technologies. To me, what's really important is we have to rethink our approaches to learning and education to fit with the new possibilities of the digital age. With new technologies, they provide us with an opportunity to rethink what we learn, how we learn, where we learn, when we learn, who we learn with. But too often, people aren't taking advantage of the possibilities of the new technology. Of course, we see some of the new possibilities that you see that computers are delivering more information to us than ever before. We have access to more information. But I worry that it's too information-centric a view of education. It's all about delivering information or getting access to information. And in my mind, that's not the way to really transform you know, education for a new age. That education too often has been about an expert delivering information to a learner. And what too often we're doing with new technologies are is that we're taking technology delivering information to the learner. We're still holding on to a transmission or delivery model of learning, as if learning is about delivering information from one person to another or from one technology to a person. And I don't think that that's the most productive way of learning, especially in today's society. New technologies do hold the opportunity for very different approaches for education. Uh, for example, we can treat the technology not as a way to deliver and access information, but as a material for building and creating things in the world. I mean, this goes back to the theories of Jean Piaget, the great psychologist, epistemologist, who talked about learning as an effort of active construct and construction of new knowledge, that we don't get knowledge delivered to us from the outside, but we're constantly actively constructing knowledge from our interactions in the world. So what we want to do is build on those theories from Piaget, but now we have new experiences in the world, new things that we can interact with, create with, that allows us to build up knowledge uh, in, a, in, in new ways from before. Uh, this is something that I learned from my mentor, Seymour Papert, who was a student of Piaget, and then came to MIT and brought Piaget's theories into the digital age. Seymour started seeing technology as a way to let people design and create new things, which would let them, to explore, let them explore new ideas. Let me give an example of one way that I've done this in my research. So I developed a programming language called Star Logo that allows people to write simple rules for lots of little objects and then see the general behaviors that emerge from all the interactions. For example, you could write simple rules for each individual bird, and then through their interactions, you see how a, the, a flocking behavior can emerge from the interactions. Or write simple behaviors for cars on a road and see when traffic jams form. Now, in the past, to study these types of scientific phenomena, bird flocking or traffic jam formation, you needed to have advanced mathematical background. You would solve partial differential equations to understand it. But now, people without that sophisticated mathematical training can, with the new technology, write simple rules and simulate the behavior and gain a deep understanding of things like emergent phenomena and decentralized systems. Things that typically weren't studied until graduate courses can now be brought down to middle school students starting to explore these ideas. We've taken the same approach when we you know, worked with the Lego toy company and we developed a new robotics construction kit called Lego Mindstorms. And this allows even young children to build robotic devices and write programs for how they should behave. As children do this, they start exploring ideas about feedback and control Again, engineering ideas that typically weren't taught until much later, young children, through their explorations by building and programming robots, can start to get an understanding of these important 
scientific and engineering ideas. So technology, if used in the right way, really has an opportunity to, re- to change what it is that we can learn. It allows, even without advanced mathematical background, to let children, through building simulations or building robots, to learn advanced mathematical and scientific ideas. Similarly, technology can change how we learn. It's not just about delivering information, but learning through experimentation and exploration. We often use the term tinkering. That we allow that, that people can learn by experimenting, trying things out, see what works. Oftentimes with technology, it allows you to create something and immediately see whether it works or not, and then make adjustments. So it's ne- not necessarily the case anymore that you have to come up with an entire plan and then execute it. With technology, you can experiment, build a quick prototype, try it out, see what works or doesn't work, adjust your prototype. So this idea of rapid prototyping, which is very important in the engineering world, is also a learning approach. That learning can also come through rapid prototyping of trying new things, using technology to quickly take the ideas in your mind, try it out in the world, see if it works, and then that helps you develop new ideas. So it's this constant spiral between building ideas in your head and then creating things in the world to try them out, and that gives you new ideas. This is an idea that, again, Seymour Papper referred to as constructionism. The constructionism is the idea that by constructing things in the world is the best way to construct ideas in your mind. So we're always, and we see that, new. of course, this could be done without new technologies, but new technologies provide many new ways that we can build in the world, that it expands the range of things that we can design, and therefore it expands the range of things that we can learn. At the same time that we can rethink what we learn and how we learn, we can also rethink where we learn and when we learn. It doesn't just have to be in the school you know, between 8 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. With technology, we can be learning all the time, be able to you know, create things on our own. It doesn't have to be in a specific setting. We can try it in an after-school setting or in a home setting, uh, in the evening, during the summer, during the winter. It breaks down the boundaries of when it is and where it is that people are learning and also with whom they're learning. Too often we think of learning happening in a classroom among people of the same age and roughly the same abilities. But in fact, a lot of the best learning happens when you connect people with different backgrounds and different experiences. And again, technology can facilitate that by creating new online learning networks where people of different ages are working together and learning from one another. Uh, People with, with less expertise can learn from people with greater expertise, but people with greater expertise also learn by explaining their ideas to others. This is something that we've seen in the online programming community that we've developed around our Scratch software. There's people of all different ages creating projects and learning with and from one another. So this idea of peer-to-peer learning uh, among people of different ages is something that is enhanced and facilitated by new technologies. So I think if we think of technologies in the right way, but that's a big if, this will not happen automatically. It's only if we think of them in the right way, we really can break out of old, outmoded approaches to learning to move away from the transmission delivery model of learning to a new model of learning where people are constantly learning by creating models, building things, exploring new ideas in collaboration with one another. I think new technologies provide us with an opportunity to rethink the structure of schools. If it were up to me, I'd break down many of the boundaries of schools. Schools put up lots of boundaries. They put boundaries between different disciplines. There's math class and science class and English class. But the best learning happens when people work on projects. Technology lets people work on advanced projects that cut across those boundaries. Technology can also break down the boundaries between ages. A school could have younger students working with older students and learning with and from one another. They could also break down the boundaries between inside of school and outside of school, having experts from the community communicating with young people who are in the classroom. We don't have to see the classroom as sort of an isolated world. It can be connected to the world. So that's another boundary that can be broken down. 
So I think we can use new technology to break down the boundaries between disciplines, boundaries between ages, boundaries between in school and outside of school to open up new opportunities for learning. I think it's always important to remember that technologies can be used in many different ways. Some can really enhance learning and open up new learning opportunities. Some of us, some ways of using technology can constrain us to very traditional ways of learning. So for me, it's not so much about what particular device you're using, but more the way that you're using it. For me, the best way to think about you know, the role of technology is whether the child is in control of the technology or not. If the child is using the te technology to design, create, experiment, explore, that's a good use of the technology. If the technology is only being used to deliver information or the child is just interacting and pointing and clicking and browsing, that's not as good use of the technology. Technologies will continue to evolve. The technologies of 20 years from now will be very different than today. But I think this general rule is the same. We should always look to how technologies can be used for experimenting, exploring, expressing ourselves, whether it's creating a simulation on the screen or using a 3D printer to create a new physical object. There are many different ways of using technology. We should always be looking how technology can be used to enhance the way people experiment, explore, and express themselves.